Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shari Aqil. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received Al Ghaybiya Palace today. A number of royal family members as well as officials. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed the government to adopt efforts to reinforce Bahrain's position and tackle current and future challenges in order to create a better future for the kingdom under the wise leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He also discussed with the audience a number of issues regarding national affairs related to Bahrain's history and heritage, stressing the importance of Bahrain's historical achievements and motivating the present and future generations to further develop the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghaybiya Palace the Philippine President's envoy to the GCC countries, Dr. Amabel Agulas, who is currently on a visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Premier hailed the bilateral ties between Bahrain and the Philippines and the development these relations are witnessing in the framework of broadening the scope of cooperation and coordination. Dr. Agulas conveyed to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister the greetings of Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte and his wishes of abundant health to him and to the citizens of Bahrain for their development and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed the keenness of the Bahraini government of increasing the fields of GATT partnerships with the Asian countries, including the Philippines, citing the keen interest of the Filipino President on developing methods of cooperation with the GCC countries, particularly the Kingdom of Bahrain. For his part, Dr. Agulas expressed his sincere thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Premier for his constant support of all that contributes to the consolidation of joint action, asserting his government's continuous support of this advanced model of relations, as well as strengthening cooperation on all levels. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghaybiya Palace the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Thailand to Bahrain, Shaya Bam Baran Rengong, who is currently who has introduced His Royal Highness a delegation from the University of Song Kla in Thailand, chaired by the President of the University, Professor Chu Sak Lim Sakol. His Royal Highness held a deep-rooted Bahraini Thai relations and the mutual interest to solidify cooperation in various fields for the benefit of the two people. His Royal Highness noted the development of cooperation between the two countries, affirming Bahrain's keenness on enhancing fields of cooperation with Thailand. The Prime Minister stressed Bahrain's keenness on activating joint agreements to achieve further accomplishments that meet the aspirations of the two people. He stated that Bahrain has provided all methods of encouraging educational advancement and investment in private education. His Royal Highness commended the high status of Songkhla University as one of the most prominent Thai universities. For his part, the Thai ambassador praised the role of His Royal Highness in developing ties between Bahrain and Thailand, asserting his country's keenness on developing cooperation with Bahrain in various fields. The Songkhla University delegation lauded His Royal Highness's role in developing the country.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, on the sidelines of the North Atlantic Council and the Istanbul Initiative meeting held today in Kuwait to launch the NATO Istanbul Cooperation Initiative Regional Center in Kuwait. Sheikh Khalid commended the efforts of Stoltenberg and NATO in developing the relations between Bahrain and the countries of the Istanbul Initiative to reinforce common interests, develop cooperation, and face the challenges that threaten the region's security and stability. For his part, the NATO Secretary General affirmed the organization's keenness on developing the means of cooperation between the Kingdom and the Istanbul Initiative countries in accordance with the nature of threats that face the region. He expressed his appreciation of Bahrain's role in maintaining safety and stability in the area. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated today in the North Atlantic Council and the Istanbul Initiative meeting in Kuwait under the patronage of the Prime Minister of Kuwait, Sheikh Jabir al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Sabah, to launch the NATO Istanbul Cooperation Initiative Regional Center in Kuwait. The Foreign Minister praised the efforts of Kuwait to enhance defense and security cooperation among the Istanbul Initiative meeting countries, affirming that the regional center that Kuwait represents will be an essential starting point in the march of the part cooperation. He added that the meeting is a proof of the continuance of the Istanbul Initiative meeting's achievements since its launch in 2004. The Foreign Minister affirmed that the Kingdom is keen on preserving security and peace in the region and on solidifying cooperation and coordination with NATO in the context of the meeting and will cont contribute positively in achieving its goals stressing the continuance of the Kingdom's efforts to develop cooperation in various fields for the benefit of all the meeting's countries. Sheikh Khalid wished success for the meeting in developing relations between NATO and the Istanbul Initiative meeting and improving practical dealing and political consultation mechanisms. The personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the French Week's conclusion in the presence of a number of ambassadors in the Kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah was greeted upon arrival by the French ambassador to Bahrain, Bernard Ranal Fab, and guests. The French ambassador delivered a speech in which he expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Abdullah for his kind patronage of this event, which showcased various aspects of the mutual cooperation. He lauded His Highness's interest in boosting cooperation between the two friendly countries. The minister affirmed France's keenness on hosting such activities periodically affirming the deep-rooted bilateral relations. The closing ceremony was attended by government officials, corporate executives from Bahraini and French firms, French embassy staff, members of the French community in the Kingdom of Bahrain, and guests. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah expressed pleasure in hosting the event, highlighting the strong ties between the two friendly countries during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He lauded the advanced level of these relations, particularly in the fields of economy, tourism, and culture. The ceremony included a screening of a movie about the French Week's highlights. French Week 2017 ended on a high note yesterday with an opera dinner at the Safetzal Hotel. The event was attended by the patron, His Highness Sheikh Abdallah bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and over 300 guests who were entertained by opera singers from France. The week consisted of a variety of events all about the French culture. I think the reactions were good everywhere and at different levels. I mean, uh, uh, medias, uh, newspapers, interviews, website, bloggers. We, have, we covered a lot of ground with the event, the program. The young people were extremely happy of some free uh, shows like uh, Yamsin Hamdan uh, a concert, Dalida film. I mean, you know Dalida, the Egyptian Italian singer. They were happy. Uh, they, they've been very numerous. We had a lot of entertainment entertainment in city center where you had uh, you know uh, different waffles different uh, shows uh, street art uh, which was extremely extremely interesting as well the sponsors of french week also attended the event and were very happy to have been a part of it we have done this uh, of course without hesitant we are being the national carrier of bahrain uh, we are kind of have a certain obligation uh, for that uh, particular event once it's involving uh, few foreigners to come and visit Bahrain and reside in Bahrain for about a week. 
and uh, this is of course uh, it will add a lot of things to Bahrain. You know the, 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 the French uh, hospitality which is something uh, very known in, in, uh, in worldwide hospitality that it's coming from uh, French elegance and French luxury. Uh, French elegance it's about blending, it's about blending from uh, art de vivre in French and the best of the local culture. This is the way which we uh, uh, take this opportunity in this French week to try to make this uh, blending between the best culture in Bahrain and the, the French elegance. And with that, the fourth edition of Bahrain French Week comes to a close. For Bahrain News, I'm Shogun Mohammed. These speakers are the representatives Council Ahmed Al Mullah chaired today, the weekly meeting. And he expressed deep appreciation for the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa that the controlling and regulating public funds should be based on the compatibility between the executive and legislative authorities. The council approved to issue a statement praising the royal directives regarding that matter in which it will benefit both the country and its people. The council also approved three reports regarding amending some laws of the human rights the internal regulation of the Representatives Council, and another regarding government support to citizens. The Council then approved a number of proposals regarding not to consider the 10-year condition as a criterion for obtaining a housing unit, a proposal on benefiting from the excess revenues of Temkin's projects, and the achievements of citizens, and another regarding requesting to issue a statement about the consequences of moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayda Zayani, Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Khalid Al Muayyad, and Chairman of the Chamber's Food and Agricultural Sector Committee, Khalid Al Amin, today presided over the inaugural Bahrain Food Excellence Awards. More in this report with Danielle Deporto. BCCI's Food and Agriculture Sector Committee. The National Award Scheme for Food Production was initiated in 2015 by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, spearheaded by the BCCI's Food and Agriculture Sector Committee. The inaugural Bahrain Food Excellence Award Ceremony took place today. For us, promoting uh, local industry and uh, local talent is very important. Uh, the food industry in Bahrain is a new industry, relatively speaking, and we need to give it all the support it requires in its infancy stage. Uh, it, it serves two purposes, really. One is to help enhance food security, and the other is exporting Bahraini goods and Bahraini culture around the world. We are proud of the people and the committee and all the people who participated in the competition. I think it's a good thing for Bahrain. It puts Bahrain on the map with ex exporting food products. And it, 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 gives them an, it gives the producers an incentive and motivation to do more. Awards were presented in a variety of categories for locally manufactured food and drinks sold both in the kingdom and overseas. The overall winner, Al Jasser Factory Company, exports about 60% of its output. And the idea is, is uh, to support the Bahraini manufacturer and Bahraini uh, product to go outside of Bahrain first of all, to enhance their marketing, their image, uh, to give them, I mean, attention that they are manufacturing Bahrain, serving Bahrain for the past 30 to 50 years. I mean, we have a lot of good product in Bahrain, which, I mean, our winner has reached the whole GCC, Egypt and Kazakhstan. So, I mean, we are proud of him. Uh, we are proud of his uh, component. The judges, they were from all over the world, Indonesia, Jordan, uh, two Bahrainis, one Indian. Uh, we are very proud of the Bahraini manufacturer. We're going to support them. We need to see more. With food security and enhancing Bahraini manufacturing and exports high on the government's agenda, such efforts to monitor, boost and award excellence in food production are only set to increase. Reporting from the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industries headquarters at Beta Tijar for Bahrain International, I'm Danielle Deporto. Under the patronage of the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Bahrain launches its National Health Plan for the years 2016 to 2025 tomorrow. The National Health Plan is the fruit of cooperation between different public, private and military health bodies under the direct supervision of the Supreme Council of Health. The President of the Supreme Council of Health, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa said, 
that the plan aims to achieve sustainability and maintain health care services along with adopting capacity building and training programs for medical caters and creating an integrated health electronic system between all health institutions. To talk more about the National Health Plan, we have on the phone the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Health, Mr. Ibrahim al -Nawakda. Mr. Ibrahim, the Kingdom is due to launch its health strategic plan for the years 2016 to 2025 tomorrow. What is this plan and what are its main pillars? Uh, Mr. Ibrahim, are you with us? Uh, sorry for that technical issue. We will continue and hopefully we'll be able to get Mr. Ibrahim on the phone with us. The National Health Plan is one of the most fruitful achievements of the health sector this past year. The plan paves the way for the future of the healthcare industry in Bahrain. Marut Mohamed al-Sha'ban in this report. 2016 has been a fruitful year for the health sector in the kingdom, which ushers in the new year with objectives and plans in line with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030 and the government's action plan. This past year has witnessed a number of strides ranging from improving the quality and accessibility of health care provisions, continuing with the shift to an integrative paperless system between government health care facilities and plans to strengthen capacity building and training in collaboration with regional and international institutes. One of the most important is the health strategy which has been approved by the, um, by the cabinet and uh, one of the most important projects in the health uh, strategy is the, uh, is the ins insurance system in Bahrain. And uh, we had actually moved in this direction where you finish the, uh, the law and the law now is under discussion with the uh, parliament and we hope that we're going to finish soon and we begin to implement the system. Uh, we had actually d done a lot of visits for uh, diff different international uh, you know, countries and we are you know, studying and comparing the insurance system in different countries and we had uh, you know, reached an agreement with the Korean to uh, you know, uh, reform or actually to modernize our IT system to be one of the most efficient systems in, in, the, in the area. Perhaps one of the most important milestones achieved this past year was the National Health Plan 2016-2025, due to be inaugurated tomorrow. The plan includes improving health care safety and quality, enhancing the method of care delivery, ensuring a sustainable health care funding system, investing in training and capacity building of health care professionals, and building an integrated health information system. This national strategy has been set to include all institutions in the health sector, and uh, all other related institutions. Uh, the strategy is to set all the foundations and goals through which we aspire to enforce the government's action plan and Bahrain Vision 2030 and to address all challenges facing the health system in its public and uh, military and private sectors. 2016 has been a fruitful year for the health sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain, with many projects and initiatives in the pipeline for 2017. The mission and vision remains clear, excellent and quality health services for the citizens and residents of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Hamid al-Shaban, Bahrain International News. Now to talk more about the National Health Plan, we have on the phone the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Health, Mr. Ibrahim al -Nawakda. Mr. Ibrahim, the Kingdom is due to launch its health strategic plan for the years 2016-2025 tomorrow. What is this plan and what are its main pillars? Uh, good evening and thank you for hosting me. Actually, the National Health Plan is uh, the strategy for healthcare services and delivery moving forward. Uh, basically, it adopts a modern method uh, in providing uh, health care based on enhancing the values of well-being and revolves around patient-centered health care systems. Uh, it is actually supposed to say that the National Health Plan is built around the seven main pillars. Uh, I don't have the time to go through them all now uh, with you, but uh, uh, the, 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 key, the key pillars, I think we can... Uh, uh, Say them that they evolve around the safety and quality, ensuring sustainability of healthcare, uh, and uh, the uh, um, uh, as well as investing in training and capacity building of healthcare professionals. Those are but a few essential objectives uh, that comes uh, to mind actually now that uh, uh, we hope together uh, to work uh, in the future uh, to improve the uh, personal health for all.
A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Hiba Abd Ghaffar. Bahrain All Share Index closed today at 1,277.94 points, marking an increase of 3.57 points above the previous closing. This increase was in the commercial banks and investment sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks sector, representing 65.18% of the total value of traded shares. 127 equity transactions took place, with a volume of 7,392,670 shares, worth 1,176,690 Bahraini dinars. The Central Bank of Bahrain announced that this week's 70 million Bahraini dinars issue of government treasury bills has been subscribed by 100%. The bills carrying a maturity of 91 days have a weighted average rate of interest of 2.18% compared to 2.16% on the previous issue. The approximate average price for the issue was 19, 99.452%, with the lowest accepted price being 99.444%. This issue will be the 1,635th, totaling to the government treasury bill's outstanding value of 1.785 billion Bahraini dinars. The business networking event of 2017 was held today by the Bahrain British Business Forum, promoting trade and investment between Bahrain and Britain through a favorable business environment. The, the event was patronized by the Bahrain British Business Forum Chairman, Mr. Khaled Al Zayani, with the keynote speaker, Dr. Simon Galpin, Managing Director of the Bahrain Economic Development Board. Mohammed Youssef brings us more details in the following report. Bahrain British Business Forum, that was formed since 1995 to promote trade and investment between Bahrain and Britain, held its first business networking event of 2017 today in the Gulf Hotel, demonstrating to the local and foreign business communities the interest and commitment for new business partnerships. The BBBF chairman, Mr. Khalid Zayani, was happy to be leading such an impartial business sector group. They mix with their British counterparts. They meet with dignitaries who come from the UK. We've often had here uh, royal members of the family from the United Kingdom. We've had ministers. We had parliamentarians. A great selection of businessmen. So the interaction between Bahrainis and those who come to visit us is that was and still is very important in enhancing business. Dr. Simon Galpin, Managing Director of the Bahrain Economic Development Board, was the keynote speaker at the event. He highlighted the opportunities that are being created around areas such as infrastructure, investment, regulatory, developments and innovation and startups. Well, I'm delighted to be here today. Um, the British business community plays a very important role in Bahrain's economy. Uh, but we believe we can attract more British businesses and we hope to encourage many of the businesses that are already here doing good business in Bahrain to expand and upgrade their presence. But we also want to call upon the British business community to act as our ambassadors, to get the word out that there are new opportunities in Bahrain and we believe we can attract more business to come and set up here. The BBBF strives to assess and introduce new trade and investments to both countries that can benefit and enhance the common economic interest of companies. I find it really beneficial, not only in terms of really strategic networking and the way you find people very authentic here, but also it's a fabulous place to work um, and share knowledge you know, with the presentations. And I also find it's great because there's Bahrainis and expatriates mixing in the same event, which is really important. The event was a great platform for local business to showcase their work as well. This event is a fertile ground for showcasing your business. Basically, if you have a good business but no one knows about it, there's no point. So this is a good place for PR, networking and getting new business opportunities with the attendees. This event was great to promote Bahrain as the regional center to conduct business throughout the Middle East.